and a uh, thank you, a big thank you to uh, Mick Mulvaney, an absolute true conservative. I'm very grateful for his support and his kind words uh, this afternoon, and I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be here with men and women who are foot soldiers in the revolution sparked some 31 years ago by the election of a president whose uh, birth we celebrated this week. Of course, I'm talking about Ronald Reagan. You know, absolutely. You know, President Reagan, he must be staring down from heaven and uh, thinking that reincarnation may indeed be possible. When, when he looks at, you know, somehow Jimmy Carter's failed presidency could reappear in the form of Barack Obama. I mean, he's, he's, he's got to be thinking that. As many of you know, I had certain ideas about putting an end to this president's failed administration. Then the people of Iowa and New Hampshire had a different idea. <laughs> but, um, you know, back at Texas A&M, my, my alma mater, we had a very unique way of addressing defeat. Aggies never lose. We just run out of time. So you could say that uh, that my president. of time. But I haven't run out on the ideas or my belief in our shared conservative ideals. A candidate, I am no more. But a committed Tenth Amendment conservative, I will be until the last breath I draw in my body. You see, this election is not about merely ending economic misery, record debt, runaway spending, failed Washington policies represented in the form of the Obama administration. The question has never been whether Obama must go, but what kind of leadership is needed to replace him to get this country back on track. We do the American people no great service if we replace the current embodiment of big government with a lukewarm version of the same. We need to stop pretending, we need to stop pretending that the main goal of the Republican governance is to do the same thing as Democrats but just don't spend as much money. Quit believing that. Quit doing that. We didn't lose the House in 2006 because of an unpopular war but because the Republican Party had traded in its calling card of physical conservatism on the road to those corrupting earmarks, excessive spending, and bigger government. That's why we lost. What 2012 offers us is the chance to offer a starkly different vision for America. And we can't tinker our way to victory. We've got to be bold. We've got to be clear. We must embrace constitutional conservatism. The argument is not just about how much we spend on various programs. We can never outspend, or outpander for that matter, the liberal Democrats. The argument must be about whether we continue to centralize power in Washington or we return it to the people and the states. We don't need Washington meddling in our local schools. We don't need Washington and their EPA discarding the clean air rules established by the states. We don't need the Justice Department deciding whether states have the right to require a photo ID to vote. We don't need that. We don't need a Washington that requires governors to come into Washington, D.C. and to grovel for health care waivers so that they can take care of their poorest citizens in a cost-effective manner. I've been fighting this type of Washington overreach for 10 plus years. Last year, I proudly signed a budget that ended all state funding for Planned Parenthood in my state.
Since then, there's been about a dozen of those clinics that have shut down in the state of Texas. But you see, because you see, because left-wing pro-abortion radicals don't like what we did. President Obama has invalidated a waiver that provides health care for more than 100,000 women in my home state. They literally set aside funding for preventative health care because we refuse to subsidize abortion. But why are we even subject to this decision to begin with? Nowhere in the Constitution does it say health care should be run by the federal government. Washington has no right to dictate how and from whom you receive health care, what your children learn in schools, or how you clean your air or protect your environment. That is not their role. And if we elect leaders from the Republican Party who preserve the current state of the bureaucracy, that command and control policy from Washington, D.C., we get the government we deserve. We ought to either be true Tenth Amendment patriots or strip it out of the Constitution. One of the two. The separation, the separations of powers doctrine is not merely about checks and balances between Congress, the executive branch, and the federal judiciary. It's also about divided sovereignty between federal government and the states. Our founding fathers, from Madison to Washington, knew that if we centralized power in an all-encompassing federal bureaucracy, that one day, the central government could become as intrusive and as powerful as that distant crown from which they fought for liberty. Our founders, our founders also protected and defended religious freedoms in our Constitution and our young nation. Today, even our religious freedoms are under attack from the Obama administration in Washington. This Justice Department tried to insert themselves in the hiring decisions of religious organizations by challenging the ministerial exception. Now, fortunately, they failed on a 9-0 vote, I might add. Even, the, even those left-wing justices of the Supreme Court thought that was too far a step. Now, though, this administration is assaulting the Catholic Church and people of faith across our nation by forcing their pro-abortion agenda on religious hospitals, on charities, and on employees. The Obama administration's war on faith must be defeated. We must win this war. We must protect this basic tenet of American freedom. Protect Catholic hospitals and people of faith regardless of their denomination to stop President Obama's liberal policies dead in its tracks. As conservatives, we know that freedom doesn't come from government. It's not even granted by the Constitution. It's a gift of a loving God. And it is the government's role to protect it. That's government's role. The federal goal Role, the federal role in safeguarding freedom is preeminently about defending our nation from foreign powers by securing the border and building a strong military. If, if Washington would simply provide for the common defense, secure our borders, and deliver our mail on time, preferably on Saturdays, I'd be happy. But you know, I guess, you know, one out of three is not too bad. But they're too busy regulating. They're too busy regulating our freedoms than to fulfill their basic responsibilities and obligations. They're spending our country into a sea of debt so deep our children may never be able to come up for air. Now let me say something else about that. If it's halftime in America, 
I'm fearful of what the final score is going to be if we let this president start the second half as a quarterback. You know, much has been said lately about who really supports free enterprise and who doesn't. Let me make something abundantly clear. We've got the greatest capitalist system in the world, but it will not continue to be if we use government to remove risk from the system. Success on Wall Street shouldn't come at the expense of Main Street. Wall Street and Washington, that cabal must be broken up. You take the housing crisis as a great example. The Washington politicians pressured Fannie, Freddie, and the banks to provide this easy lending to put more Americans in homes that they couldn't afford. The Federal Reserve pushed interest rates artificially low. The subprime market exploded with these risky loans. Some Americans thought if you could get the house for zero down and they could figure out how to pay the balloon note later. No one was watching the rating companies, the agencies that were given these AAA ratings to complex securities that were filled with high-risk loans. When the market crashed, those on Wall Street who saw it coming, they made millions. And those who didn't see it coming, they got bailed out. Now we learn that that 700 mil, excuse me, 700 billion TARP payment, that was kind of paltry compared to the secret loan guarantee of 7.7 .7 trillion dollars. You ought to be outraged. You ought to be incensed. Those paying the price are not the large banks who were over leveraged, not the insurance companies that took on too much risk, not even the executives who continued to reap these large bonuses even after the walls came tumbling down. Nope. It was people like you and me. It was those of you in this audience and all across this country that are paying the price. Average Americans, Main Street, businesses, our children who stand to inherit the worst financial mess that this country's ever seen. And it's wrong. And it's unfair. And it's weakening America. And we need to clean up the corruption from K Street to Wall Street so they can't gamble with our children's future ever again. You know, America remains the most noble experiment in governing ever offered in the history of mankind. For the first time ever, the founders of a nation recognized our rights are endowed by our Creator. And after winning our freedom, they didn't centralize power amongst themselves. They gave it back to the people. This election is about a smaller, humbler federal government. It's about restoring power to the American people. If we're going to have a nation that lives up to constitutional ideals, then it's not merely about spending less on Washington programs, but about returning that power to the people and the states. You don't have to settle you don't have to settle this election. You don't have to resign yourself to the faith that this country is going to be less in the future than it was in the past. You have an opportunity. Oh, I say you have an obligation. You have the power. And more importantly, you have the Constitution on your side to make conservative change. Go forth. Build a better nation based on those founding principles. Take this country back and let the grandest experiment in freedom the world has ever seen go forward. Go forward powerfully and it is in your hands and through your hands God will bless you and you in turn 
will continue, he in turn will continue to bless this great country of America. God bless you and thank you.